So guys, we got black, white, Native American, Mexican, and Asian cowboys. Let's talk about the Magnificent Seven. Bar side movie reviews. So the first thing that needs to be said here is this movie was a ton of fun. This movie is directed by Antoine Fuqua and it's actually an adaptation of the 1960s film, which is an adaptation of the 1954 film of The Seven Samurai. So the casting of this film was amazing, right? You got Denzel Washington as the lead, you have Chris Pratt, you have Ethan Hawke, you have Vincent D'Onofrio, and a host of other great cast members. And this cast was very diverse, a very different look than the 1960s film. And I love the fact that Fuqua does that, but I also love the fact that he deals with this in a very interesting way throughout the film. So guys, before we get into the meat and potatoes of this film, and before I actually address the issue of what I just talked about with the diversity of the cast, let's give you a quick synopsis, no spoiler of course, so you have a little bit of context when we talk about the film. So the film pretty much does follow the 1960s film. In terms of the storyline and the structure of the film, you have seven cowboys or seven gunslingers. Seven gunslingers sounds a little bit more cool. So we'll say seven gunslingers that come together pretty much to help a town that is being jeopardized by an industrialist who pretty much wants to rip the land from under the people there. So one of the things you notice almost immediately in this film is the racial diversity of the seven, especially if you are comparing this film to the 1960s version. So here's what's interesting about what Fuqua does here. Number one, I love the fact that he cast the Magnificent Seven as a racially diverse group, but I also really like how he deals with this in the film. So one of the things I love about how Fuqua deals with the diversity in this film is that he doesn't go into any long explanation about why the Magnificent Seven is so diverse. And people may have been thinking that, especially given the context of when this film was shot or the period of which this film was shot. He doesn't do that. He just says, here, this is the Magnificent Seven. And yes, they are a diverse group. But here's what's nice about that. He doesn't just present such a diverse change and not address it at all in the film. He addresses it within the context of the script and the dialogue. So you still see the ethnic or the diverse differences as it relates to the different people groups in the film, but he doesn't make a big deal about it. And I think that was just such a great way to handle that change in the film. All right, guys, so let's transition a little bit and talk about the character development in this film because there have been some complaints that there was not enough character development in the seven for people to really connect with them, and they would have liked to have known a little bit more of the backstory. So for me, this was not a problem. I think that uh, Fuqua gets something right here in that he tells us enough about the seven for them to be important and for us to connect with them within the context of the whole story. Because for me, The Magnificent Seven isn't necessarily about the seven gunslingers, but it's about the seven gunslingers together within the context of the story. So I think that Fuqua does a really good job of giving us just enough information about them and the dialogue for us to connect with them and really care about what happens to these guys in this film. So the performances in this film were Great. I mean, really what you would expect for them to be, right, given the cast of this film. Some problems here and there for me, but all in all, everybody did such a great job embodying their characters, which really made this film a lot of fun to watch. I especially like Vincent D'Onofrio's character. A lot of people have commented about his performance in this film because he does play a very quirky, offbeat character, and he is a lot of fun to watch on screen. Now, some folks have complained that his character is a bit cartoonish, and honestly, I can see where they're coming from with that, but I think that was the point for him to to play someone that was so offbeat that he was strange to watch on screen but at the same time he was a lot of fun. Peter Sarsgaard is the villain in this movie and he actually does a really good job in this film. The only problem is we don't see him enough. Now Fuqua does do a good job when we first meet him of establishing him pretty quickly as a wretched human being but I wish that we saw a little bit more of this in him throughout the film. So that's one complaint I do have there. But all in all, the acting, the performances in this film were really, really good. Visually, this film is really good as well. The cinematographer for this film is Mor Fiore, who also worked with Fuqua in Training Day. And he does a really, really good job of showing us some very, very beautiful scenic shots. And he also does a really, really good job at paying homage visually to some of the classic things that you would see in a Western film. So when you have the gunslingers facing off, we get those nice kind of long shots and we get the nice close-up of the eyes during the face-off and a close-up of the hands with the twitching finger right before the draw and that nice cut work in the bars. All the things that we are 
used to seeing in classic Western films are in this movie. There are one gripe I do have about this movie visually. It's just a small one, and that's at at times when we when we're looking at the town from a long point of view, it looks artificial to me. And I think the reason for this is because of how the camera is angled and we are actually seeing the town. But all in all, this movie is actually a great piece of visual storytelling as well as written script. And it lends itself, as I say, to a very, very fun and enjoyable ride. So go get your tickets, but wait. Do not get tickets for your kids. This movie is rated PG-13, and I'm really not sure why. Listen, a lot of folks drop in this film. Some by axe, some by bullets, and there's enough holes to go around in people in this film. Not appropriate for kids, in my opinion, so I would not take your kids to see this film, even though it is rated PG-13. Go get your tickets. Thank you guys so much, as always, for taking the time out to watch this review. Comment, like, subscribe, and I will see you on the next video. Take care. Hey, guys, it's Al again, and I just want to thank you once more for taking the time out to watch my review of The Magnificent Seven. If you liked it, please subscribe and join the community. Give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to comment. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.